Imagine this, you're lost in the woods, your phone's dead, you're wearing Crocs for some reason, and everything you remember from survival shows is starting to blur into one dramatic slow motion montage. Time to rely on instinct, right? Wrong. Because your instincts and that weird wilderness advice you picked up from cartoons, movies, and probably your uncle who thinks Bear Grylls is soft might actually get you killed. Today, we're going to rip apart some of the most popular survival myths that sound helpful, but are actually Mother Nature's version of a prank. So unless you want your final words to be, wait, I thought this was safe, keep watching, let's get right into it. Number 9. You can outrun a wild animal. Let's end with this gem of optimism. You see a wild animal, maybe a bear, a cougar, or some nightmare deer with glowing eyes and a vengeance arc, and your brain screams run, except don't. Seriously, don't. You are not faster than a bear. You are not faster than a moose. You are definitely not faster than a wolf pack that trained for this moment like it's the Animal Olympics. Bears can hit 35 miles per hour. That's faster than Usain Bolt, and he doesn't carry camping gear or scream while sprinting. Most animals will instinctively chase fleeing prey. It's built into their system. If you run, you flip their ooh chasey time switch. Instead, the smarter move is to stay calm, make yourself look big, and back away slowly. Don't make eye contact with predators like mountain lions. That can be seen as a challenge. But don't turn your back either. Yes, this all feels counterintuitive, but trying to outrun nature is like trying to dodge raindrops. You're just going to end up tired, wet, and probably on the menu. So unless you're being hunted by a tortoise or a hungover sloth, running is not the move. Number 8. Shelter first, then water and food. You're stranded. Adrenaline kicks in. You remember something vague about survival priorities. You know you need water and food, but you also don't want to sleep on rocks with coyotes whispering sweet nothings all night. So what's the real priority? Spoiler alert, it's shelter, not food, not even water. There's a thing called the rule of threes, three minutes without air, three hours without shelter in extreme conditions, three days without water, and three weeks without food. Which means that if it's freezing, raining, or blistering hot, lack of shelter will kill you way faster than dehydration. Your body is basically a Goldilocks machine. It needs temperature juiced right, too cold, hypothermia, too hot, heat stroke, too exposed. You're basically slow cooking or freeze drying yourself. So yes, shelter matters first, especially if night is coming or the weather sucks. Get dry, get shade, get covered. Then you can play wilderness chef with your boiled shoe leather or find puddle water to sip like a Victorian ghost. Because no matter how many protein bars you stashed or how hydrated your coconut water makes you feel, exposure will end you faster than hunger ever could. Number 7. You can punch a shark in the nose. You're swimming peacefully. Life is good. Then, Jaws theme intensifies. A shark appears. Time slows down. You remember what that one friend said? If a shark attacks, punch it in the nose. Yeah, about that. In theory, the shark's nose, or more specifically, the snout area near its ampulli of Lorenzini, fancy electrosensing pores, is a sensitive spot. In practice, good luck finding it when a 1,200-pound torpedo with teeth is darting at you in murky water while you're flailing like a confused sea noodle. Even experienced divers admit that hitting a moving shark's nose underwater is like trying to flick a bee out of the air, while underwater or when terrified and wearing flippers. And here's the fun part. If you miss the nose, you're likely to hit the mouth. You know, the part filled with teeth evolved to separate meat from bone. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. What does work better? Going for the eyes or gills. Sharks don't like having their sea holes and breathe holes messed with. It disrupts their sensory systems and says, Hey, I may be chewy, but I'm not easy. But realistically, prevention greater than punching. Avoid erratic splashing. Don't swim where there are seals aka shark buffet, and maybe skip that midnight dip in known shark territory. Because if your defense plan is underwater boxing match with apex predator, you might want to update your will first. Number 6. Rub frostbite to warm it up. Your fingers are frozen, your toes feel like expired popsicles, but it's fine, right? You've seen movies where people rub their skin to warm it up and magically walk away with no nerve damage. So you start rubbing, and you've just made it worse. Never rub frostbitten skin, ever. Frostbite isn't just cold skin, it's skin and the tissues underneath freezing. Ice crystals literally form inside your cells and shred them from the inside out like little frozen knives. 
It's less chilly inconvenience and more slow motion meat blender. When you rub frozen tissue, you're not warming it up, you're breaking it apart. You're turning potential recovery into permanent damage. Congratulations, you've just upgraded your frozen hand to amputation candidate. And while we're myth busting, don't use hot water, fire or a heating pad either. Frostbitten areas are numb, so you can't feel if they're being burned. The safest way to rewarm frostbitten limbs is gradually with warm, not hot water. Like a nice bath for your dumb decisions. So remember, frostbite is not a massage opportunity. Treat it gently or risk turning your fingers into meat crayons. Number five, if you're lost, just follow a river. This one sounds smart, right? Water leads to people. Civilization loves rivers. Just find one and follow it downstream until you stumble into a cozy town with a diner and indoor plumbing. Easy. But also, no. Sure, rivers can lead to civilization, but they can also lead to deep canyons, impossible rapids, and mosquito-riddled nightmares where the only civilization is a family of raccoons fighting over a bag of Doritos. Following a river might mean scaling cliffs, crossing dangerous terrain, or walking dozens of miles without food or shelter. And guess what happens when that river meanders away from your original search area? Now rescuers are combing through the wrong forest while you're miles downstream, arguing with beavers about property lines. And if it rains, that peaceful stream can turn into a flash flood death slide faster than you can say, this was supposed to be a shortcut. Rivers can be helpful, sure, but they're not a magical breadcrumb trail to Starbucks. If you're truly lost, your best move is to stay put, especially if someone knows you're missing, Find or build shelter, signal for help, and save your energy instead of starring in your own Lewis and Clark reboot. Your legs are not Google Maps. Don't trust them blindly just because there's flowing water nearby. Number four, moss always grows on the north side. You're lost in the forest. No phone, no compass, no idea what day it is. But it's cool because you remember this fun fact from cartoons or scout camp. Moss grows on the north side of trees. Well, buckle up because that's a half-truth wrapped in a leafy lie. Yes, in some parts of the world, specifically the Northern Hemisphere, under very specific conditions, moss can grow more densely on the north side of trees. Why? Because the north side gets less sun and stays moist. But moss is a rebel. It's opportunistic. It doesn't follow rules. It grows wherever it's damp. North, south, sideways, upside down, on rocks, logs, or abandoned flip-flops. So unless you're a trained botanist with years of forest orientation experience, Using moss to find north is like asking a squirrel for directions. You might get lucky, but you're more likely to end up walking in circles until nightfall when things get really fun. If you want to navigate in the wild, learn to read the sun's position, use the stars, or, hear me out, bring an actual compass. Moss doesn't care about your survival arc. Number three, you can drink your pee. You're dehydrated, lost in the desert, and your body is starting to feel like it's made of beef jerky and regrets. And then it hits you. I'll just drink my pee. Because you've seen that one survival guy do it. You know the one. He eats bugs like snacks and squeezes hydration from elephant dung like it's a juice cleanse. Here's the cold salty truth. Your pee is not Gatorade. Urine is your body's way of flushing out waste products. It's loaded with salts, toxins, and stuff your kidneys worked very hard to get rid of. When you drink it, you're just putting all that garbage back in. It's like taking out the trash and then dumping it back in your living room. Sure, it's your trash, but it still stinks. And the more dehydrated you are, the worse your pee gets. It turns darker, more concentrated, and even less useful. At a certain point, it's just kidney tea. And drinking it puts more strain on your already stressed kidneys, making dehydration even worse. So unless you've got a filtration system or Bear Grylls personally supervising you, Skip the golden sips. Focus on conserving sweat, finding shade, and maybe crying a little. But not too much. That's precious moisture. Number two, play dead for bears. You see a bear. It sees you. You immediately fall to the ground and go limp like a fainting goat in yoga pants. Smart, right? That depends entirely on the bear. And sadly, most people don't carry a field guide titled How to Identify Your Doom in Fur Form. If it's a grizzly bear and it's attacking you defensively, Think, you surprised it near its cubs, playing dead might work. Curl into a ball, protect your neck, and pray it gets bored. But if it's a black bear, playing dead is the worst idea ever. Black bears are more likely to see your lifeless body and think, oh great, delivery, and dig right in. With black bears you should actually fight back. 
loud noises, big movements, make yourself look massive and terrifying like your credit card statement in physical form. Moral of the story, don't just assume the fetal position is your golden ticket to safety, it might just be the appetizer course. Number one, suck the venom. Out, you get bitten by a snake. Panic sets in. What do you do? Obviously, you remember that classic cowboy logic. Cut the bite and suck out the venom like a noble idiot in a western. Yeah, don't. This myth is not only outdated, it's actively dangerous. Sucking out venom doesn't remove enough to help. And guess what? You now have a venom-contaminated open wound inside your mouth. Congrats, now you're poisoned twice. Also, unless you're sprinting through the outback with a biology degree, how do you even know what bit you? It could be non-venomous, or mildly venomous, or a rock. Panic hallucinations are a thing. And cutting the wound? That's a one-way ticket to infection city. You've just added blood loss to your growing list of problems. Here's what you should do. Stay calm, immobilize the area, keep it below heart level, and call for help like a modern human with access to emergency services. Your best weapon isn't your teeth, it's not being a dramatic DIY vampire. That's all for today, I'll be making similar videos in the future, subscribe to see them.